What's up, man? Welcome to another episode of the Time to Man Up podcast. In this episode, it's going to take a little bit of manning up as we look at uh, just something that caught my attention this past week. And I thought, you know, we're going to take this on on the podcast. We're going to talk about it, even though maybe a lot of people don't like to talk about it. We're going to take it on. And, and I think that one thing more and more that I see, even as I look back at my own ministry as a pastor for 32 years, is that often the church, and I guess maybe in the name of love, we fail to take on issues that are pertinent in our world, in our country, uh, where there is blatant sinfulness, uh, where there are issues that clearly stand in opposition of God. And this past Sunday, uh, and again, I'm not speaking of church here. What I'm speaking of is an issue this past Sunday, and some of you are probably aware of this, but our president on Easter Sunday, remember Easter Sunday, it's the day that believers celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so it's one of the most important church services that we have in the life of the church. Uh, I often tell people, we, we, we hear about Christer Christians that come on Christmas and Easter, uh, but I tell a lot of believers that to me, the most important service that we have is Good Friday service. It, it's unfortunately in the church, one that gets uh, ignored one that we don't pay a lot of attention to. We'll do Palm Sunday because it's on a Sunday and we'll do Easter because it's on an Easter. But on Friday, uh, and we call it Good Friday, which is crazy, right? Because somebody dies on the cross for us and we call it Good Friday. But a lot of times we don't give it the recognition uh, that it deserves. Now, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on that. I can keep going back to that, especially during Easter uh, but Easter is a day for us to celebrate. And this past Easter, March 31st, our president, the president of our country, the United States, a country that was formed on biblical principles. And, and listen, I understand that though we were formed on biblical principles, we have moved further and further and further away from God. And uh, we have placed ourselves in a bad situation, in a bad standing before God, and in a place that actually requires us to return to him, to get back to. Now, listen, those that formed our country, they were not perfect. They were sinners, uh, but they formed it based on the principles of the Bible, biblical principles they took and use those in the Constitution. And now what we continue to do is basically tear all of that down and move to what we think is right. I mean, right in a world where everybody gets to determine their own right, I guess that means you're never wrong because you just change what's right. But when our president came out this Sunday and declared our national for, for the United States, a national transgender visibility day. I think my head about exploded when I heard that because I thought, what in the world are we doing on a day that we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ on a weekend that we celebrate the most amazing thing that God did for us in sending his son to die a brutal death on the cross to raise from the dead. I mean, guys, he paid the penalty for our sins and he gave us hope of eternal life in one weekend. He pulled this off. I mean, those three days changed everything for all of mankind. And now he offers that as a gift, but a gift that we have to receive and unfortunately, so many people fail to receive that gift. When I heard that our president proclaimed it to be Transgender Visibility Day, at first I was just ticked off at our president. And, and guys, this doesn't matter whether you, whatever party you are, Republican or Democrat, it doesn't matter. Uh, it, 
there is respect that goes out to the president of our country. And unfortunately, if you don't like the president that's in there, often you don't show them the respect of that office. And remember this, I always remind people that God places people in power. The Pharaoh was placed in power, and right? And God was able to harden his heart, soften his heart, and harden it again. God was able to do that. Saul, even though the the people placed him there, God allowed him to be placed as king over Israel because they wanted a king like everybody else wanted. And God's like, what about me? And they're like, we want a king. So he gave it to him. But then there came a time where God removed him because uh, his heart wasn't good and he had to be removed. The spirit was removed from him. And that's where David comes in. But throughout time, anyone that is in a position of power, God has allowed to be there, has placed there, whatever it is, God has authority to place people in position and to remove them in position. And that comes even in your job where you work. It's the same way that God has the ability to do that. It's so interesting, even in the church, when people will want a pastor gone, it's kind of like, well, God put them there. You didn't put them there. And they're like, well, we voted. But God brought them there. And when we think about that, it's a little absurd. But God has the authority. God has the power to be able to do that. So then that got me to think about, okay, if that's true, if God has placed him in this position, even though he's making this decision that is totally contrary to God, what's going on here? Guys, what we can never forget is that there is a battle that's going on, a battle that is being fought. And we talk about World War I, and we talk about World War II, and we talk about the possibility of World War III. Guys, there is a battle that is going on that is bigger than any of those wars. And those wars were pretty big, World War I and World War II. And a lot of people lost their lives in those wars, in the Civil War, and many other wars that our country has fought in. But there is a world that goes on, a war that goes on that is a spiritual war. And that war is being fought between God and Satan. And it's a war that's real. And we need to understand that as we look at Transgender Visibility Day, Why would we be surprised, as I found out this has been around for 15 years, there's an International Transgender Visibility Day. It's been around for 15 years, but it just happens to be that the first time we have it proclaimed as a national day is on March 31st, which is the day it's normally on, but it's Easter. Of all the years it could have been done, it's on Easter. Why is that? Because Satan is on the attack. Satan's attacking And he wants to draw people away from worshiping God. He wants people to recognize him. What that did is it took me from wanting to talk about Transgender Visibility Day and the reality that why would we support something that is sinful? It's sinful. And why does the church not speak out against it? And again, we often err on speaking in love, not speaking the truth in love. We still have to speak the truth as believers, as the church. Men, we got to speak the truth. I mean, there are times, men, when your wife comes out and she says, how does this outfit look, that you've got to say, it's not really that appealing. Maybe she throws something at you. I don't know. But we've got to be willing to say that. And not when she goes out and she's embarrassed because a woman tells her the truth that she says, well, why didn't you tell me? Well, we need to speak the truth, even when it hurts sometimes. As a church, we need to be willing to stand up. And what I've noticed in the church, and remember, I was in the ministry for 32 years, so I'm getting it. But we have this one day in January that we proclaim as Sanctity of Life Sunday, right? Even though the whole month is, we've got this day. And I'm thinking, is that what we believe? Is that we as a church, we as believers, we stand for sanctity of life one day? And why is it that we don't 
call it what it is because my understanding is if you take the life of a living, breathing human being, that is murder. And I know that sounds really harsh. And listen, I know that people are dealing with the fact that they have had abortions and, and they have to live with that. And that's horrible. That's hard. And I praise God that there is forgiveness found in Jesus Christ, that he redeems people, that he restores people. I praise God because I've seen that in people's lives. But that doesn't change the fact that it's sin. It's wrong. It's murder. And guys, what happens is this, because of love, we don't want to address things like gluttony, lying, cheating, adultery. Uh, and, and so we just kind of step back and we kind of tickle people's ears and we talk about things that won't get us in hot water. But when, when does the church stand up for what's right and say, this is wrong and we need to oppose it. We need to stand against it. When do believers, men, step up and do these things? And why has it become so radical that if somebody does that, it's kind of like, whoa, remember, we're supposed to love people. Okay, let me just tell you this. The Bible says that those that God loves, he disciplines them. Sometimes God disciplines us because we need it to get us back on track. He disciplines us. Sometimes people in the body of Christ or people that don't know Christ, they're, uh, they're disobedient and they need correction. There are so many churches now that are lowering their standards and to be downright honest, they are accepting sinfulness into the church in the uh, with the idea of acceptance and love but that doesn't change the fact that God created man and God created woman he did not create transgender he just didn't do it and if the animal kingdom can get it right that a relationship is between a female and a male how can we not get it right? God created man. He created woman. He created them to come together. And in the Old Testament to populate the earth, right? He tells Adam and Eve, go be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth. And then in the New Testament, we see that same concept, but now it's a spiritual fill the earth because now Jesus has come. He's paid the price. Let's go tell people about Jesus. But there is this relationship between a man and a woman that God created as right, as good, as he said, very good when he created them. Now, as we look at this, man's sinfulness, our failures to, to follow God, we see this battle that's taking place. And this battle that is taking place where Transgender Visibility Day would be mentioned on Easter. Why? Because this battle's going on. But let me explain a little bit about Satan. When I think about Satan, guys, I think about this little red dude, and he's got a pointy tail, and he's got a pitchfork, and he usually stands on people's shoulders, right? Don't we see that usually? You got the Satan figure on one side and the angelic figure on the other side, and that's usually what I think of. But what I want to do is I want to talk to you a little bit about Lucifer so you really understand this dude we're up against. Because we can't just blow it off. Yes, God is all powerful. God's in control. There's nothing. Lucifer can't do anything without God allowing it. Right? We talk about in Job when he says, have you considered Job? There's none righteous like him. In that scene, like... Satan is walking around where Jesus is. They're in the same area where God is, and they're in the same area. And he says, hey, have you considered Job? If Job would have heard that, he would have been like, what are you doing to me, God? Why are you putting me into this place? So that's to say there was this relationship where there was this closeness. The name Lucifer means uh, the star of the morning. 
Star of the morning is what it means. And Lucifer was beautiful. And I want to read for you when we look at it. He was the guardian of the cherubim. And so when you look at the archangels, you have Gabriel, who Gabriel, you know that if there's a big announcement to be made, like the coming of Jesus, Gabriel is involved in that. Gabriel is the one that's making announcements, that's making proclamations. That's Gabriel, the archangel Gabriel. Then there's the archangel Michael. And Michael is the one that's fighting battles, right? He is the one that is waging war against Satan, against anyone that would stand against God. He is there to fight the battle. And then we have Lucifer. Lucifer was the guardian of the cherubim. The cherubim are those that would surround the throne of God. And when we look at that, it's like his like secret service, right? I mean, they're there and God doesn't really need that, but the cherubim have that important position. And even as we'll talk about here in a minute, when Adam and Eve are cast out of the garden, there are cherubim that are positioned at the gate so that no one can get back into the garden. Because you know that when Adam and Eve were, were cast out of there, they would have wanted to get back and say, man, we really blew it. Let's see if we can go back. So that was the role that he played. Now in Ezekiel 28, 12 through 17, let me read this for you. It says this, you were the model of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. You were anointed as a guardian cherub for so I ordained you. You were on the holy mount of God. You walked among the fiery stones. You were blameless in your ways from the day you were created till wickedness was found in you. Through your widespread trade, you were filled with violence and you sinned. So I drove you in disgrace from the mount of God and I expelled you, O guardian cherub, and among the fire, from among the fiery stones. Your heart became proud on account of your beauty and you corrupted your wisdom because of your splendor. So I threw you to earth. I made a spectacle of you before Kings. Guys, when we look at this, Lucifer was beautiful and I, you can kind of say he got full of himself in heaven. He got full of himself and thought, why are we worshiping God? Why can't other people be worshiped? Why can't I be worshiped? Why can't I be into a position where people look to me and God cast him out of heaven? And as the book of Revelation in Revelation chapter 12 tells us in verse four, it says his tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth so that when she bore her child, he might devour it. What we find is that Satan is cast out of the earth, uh, out of heaven, and he takes a third of the angels with him. Guys, that's a battle, and that is what we're up against. And it's so, answer it, because again, I, I, I've said this before, and I keep saying it. When I sing the song Silent Night on Christmas, I'm like, that's baloney. It was not a silent night. Uh, the dragon was waiting to devour the kid. He's like, you know what? This ain't happening. Jesus ain't coming. He's not going to pay the penalty for their sins. He's not going to restore people to God. And there was battle going on. I'm guessing Michael was pretty active as the archangel of, of the warrior. He was pretty active. So it goes on and it just talks about the fact that we have Satan between somewhere between chapter one, where God creates all things and chapter three, when man sins and is cast out of the garden, something happens there. And Satan is on the earth in the form of a serpent, a serpent that at that time had legs after the, the judgments of God, the consequences of the sin. Um, God says, Hey serpent, you're going to now crawl around on your belly tell people all the time, my favorite part of the Bible is when it talks about Jesus crushing the head of the serpent. Cause I'm like, I'm all for that. Uh, the less serpents we have, the better it is. And I know, sorry, some of you guys love serpents. I just, I mean, I, I, spiders I'm good with, uh, sharks I'm good with, you know, things and uh, other things in the world. I'm good with them. Crocodiles, alligators, 
I'm good with them. But snakes, even a garter snake, scares me to death. That's just how I am. That's how God created me. So we see there that, that God creates Lucifer in perfection, this beautiful individual who rebels against God, thinks of himself better than he really is, and he rebels. But he's beautiful. But he becomes vicious, and he becomes a devouring lion, right? Who's trying to bring people down. Here's an interesting passage in Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 through 15, where it says this. How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground. You who weakened the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, to the lowest depths of the pit. So it's interesting that, that what's going on here, and even in the Bible, it, it will talk about uh, Elisha is like, listen, don't worry in the battle, because here's what you need to know about the battle. In the battle, you've got more people for you than against you. And he's not talking specifically people, guys. Because when you look at the numbers, yes, one third of the angels being cast out is a lot. But what does that mean? Two thirds of the angels remained in heaven with God. So that's the battle that takes place. As we look at this proclamation that's made on Easter Sunday, do not miss the fact that this is an attack against God. This is an attack that would try to take away the focus, the significance of the celebration of Easter and what Jesus did for us on the cross and in the resurrection. And we need to remember that. We need to share that. We need to stand against the opposition and let the world know what is right not according to us, but according to the word of God. In thinking through this episode, it started out being how dare our president make a national transgender visibility day. But perhaps what it needed to be is where is the church and where are the believers, specifically men, who will stand for what is right? And men, it just happens to be that one of those battlefields right now is transgender. And it always boggles my mind how the people that stand for women's rights, they disappear. They're nowhere to be found while men steal trophies from women. All in the name of acceptance. We just allow it to happen. Men, if you have daughters, you need to stand for them. If you don't have daughters, you need to stand for other daughters and women and the rights that they have. Because we know from the word of God that God created man, that God created women, and the church, we need to make it clear what God stands for, what God's word says. And let's stop watering down the truth in the name of love. But let's understand that God is righteous, God is holy, and God is just. And we need to stand. But when we speak the truth, 
we speak the truth in love because our desire is that all would come to know Jesus Christ as their savior. So guys, that's what I got for you today. Just with everything going on in our world, we want to talk about these things. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Maybe even some of you can't stand it because of the stances that I've taken on this, and that's okay. All I encourage you to do is read the word of God and see what it says. All I encourage you to do is recognize that we can't necessarily put a person's face to what is done like our president. We have to understand that there are things going on that we don't even comprehend. And that is the spiritual warfare that takes place of the principalities of this world. And we don't even know what's going on. We don't even know the battles that are being fought even for us. But thank goodness we've got a, a archangel like Michael waging the battle for us. Thank goodness we've got a general, a commander in God that loves us and watches over us. And in the end, he wins the war. He wins it. Sometimes it may not feel like that, especially in the country we live in. But when you look at all the craziness going on all around us, know this. God wins and nothing can change that. And Satan, he knows, but he's going to do everything he can to bring people down. And men, he will come after you. Stand firm in the word of God. Guys, I want to encourage you to take time to go to timetomanup.com. Check out, we've got a study there called Man Up, and it's becoming the man God desires you to be. It's a 10-week study uh, on 1 Corinthians 16, verses 13 to 14. Uh, we're actually going to be coming out with a shirt. There are five shields that go with that. And we're going to come out with a shirt that, that represents that. I'm excited for that. We've been working on it. Uh, but check out that study. Bring it to your church for next fall. If you're, if you're going to be prepping over the summer to get ready, uh, bring it to your church. It's a great 10-week study to just be able to work through that passage and hopefully challenge men. Uh, one of my favorite parts of that study is looking at our kryptonite. What are the kryptonites in our lives that bring us down? Uh, we need to be aware of the kryptonites and we need to get people that are strong and can stand firm in that to be there with us, to fight the fight with us because uh, men were in this together, but our families, our churches, our communities, our nation needs men willing to stand firm in the word of God. Guys, have a great day and uh, man, keep watching. Make sure you hit all those buttons that share, that like, that bell. Uh, get the word out for the podcast. Uh, we hope that you found this valuable and we're just going to keep speaking the truth. And whether it's liked or not, we need to speak the truth. Uh, but we do speak that truth in love because our desire is for all to recognize the error of their ways, repent and, and turn to God because that's where our hope lies. Guys, have a great day. And remember, it's time to man up.